Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day today. And today we're headed to a new charging station and it is in Warrington, Missouri. And a few days ago, was ever, we went down to a, a Tesla Magic Dock station and we took the Rivian there to, to just to see how things were kind of get a lay of the land and see how, what type of challenges uh, that would be presented to non Tesla vehicles charging on the Tesla supercharger network. And of course, I made a video on that and yeah, just go ahead and watch that one also. But this is a follow up. And so basically, what I'm doing now, I'm going to do a compare and contrast uh, with a public charging station that just went in. And I believe it was under NEVI funding, uh, but it is a GM uh, energy station. And they partnered with uh, Flying J Travel Center uh, to put in about 200 charging stations throughout the United States this year. So, um, so yeah, I just want to compare it to the supercharging network and see if this is better or, you know, does it improve the charging experience and, or, you know, or, and also what drawbacks that may come with this uh, network. But uh, I have about 30 more miles before I get to it. And I'll see you back when I get to the charging station. Okay, I'm uh, about to roll up on the Flying J. And yeah, we're gonna check out these uh, chargers here. Again, yeah, I see it already. I see the, uh, the canopy with uh, GM Energy on it. Yeah, see if I can get in. I guess I, oh, I could have turned in right here. Okay. Oh, this is a nice one, too. Drive west, then turn right. Okay, this is a nice one right here. It has a canopy and it's a pull through. Oh, yeah, this is nice. So if you have a truck towing the trailer, oh, this is perfect right here. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and park here and I am going to check out the charging speeds. It says it's a 350 kilowatt charger and CCS of course. So I'm gonna check out the charging speeds and I'm gonna compare it to uh, the charging speeds I was getting at the uh, at the Tesla supercharger. And let me just check my state of charge here. And I'm at 36%. I am at somewhat of a lower state of charge than I was uh, at the Tesla supercharger. Um, it's within 10%. So I, I was probably around 42 to 45% when I pulled up to the Tesla supercharger. And I'm at 36% now, so we're going to just see what type of charging speeds I get. And we're going to check this canopy out. And right now, it's looking pretty darn good. Right now, I'm pretty impressed. And see you in a moment. The uh, charging station here, you see it has a GM Energy, nice canopy. And you see my Rivian uh, parked right here. Nice pull through. Really love this. This is nice. And of course, you have your gas station right there. And you have your Flying J's with the Denny's. And we just go in and take a look around, but this is awesome. The only thing I don't see here is I don't see any trash cans or any place to, uh, to wash your windows or anything like that. So that's one thing. Oh, there's a trash can right there. But yeah, there's no place to wash your windows. So that is one thing that can be approved upon and I'm just going to check around just to make sure and right here uh, let's see that's one station and I'm just go over to the other one over here and they both look like they're working so um I do have an EVGO account 
and this is the EVgo station. It's powered by EVgo anyway, so we're gonna see if I can just plug in and charge my vehicle up. I do this sort of plug and charge here, but we're gonna see. Uh, if not, I'll just go to my app and set everything up. But let me go ahead and uh, open my charge port up. And it says tap to start and plug the connector in. And I like that because they have that uh, really up in there. It locks in. And it does have some cable management on it too. Let me go ahead and undo this. Let's try to get this one hand. This cable is cold, so it's kind of hard to move. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if this thing recognizes my vehicle and starts charging. But so far, I haven't been able to get it to work. Let's just go around to the screen, you see. So I guess maybe it's not gonna work. Let's check the inside of the vehicle. And it says starting. But I've seen this before and it never worked. And so I fully expect this not to start up. <laughs> So I just unplugged and now it's saying preparing to charge and I just hit the, the charge button and we'll see how fast it connects. And I guess we can see here on my screen here. And it's connected. And right now, you see I'm getting 116 kilowatts. And this is kind of the same that I was getting at the uh, Tesla supercharger too. I was getting 119 kilowatts when I first plugged in. And so it seems to be, uh, we'll just see. I'm not sure my battery preconditioned on the way over here. You know, so we're still sitting at 117. And we'll see how fast this ramps up and how high it goes up. And so now I just jumped up to 148 kilowatts. And this is almost exactly the same uh, as the Tesla supercharger. It was at around 118, 119, and then it jumped up to 148, exact. Almost around the same amount of time and in the exact same manner. So uh, I'm just gonna continue to watch this and see if I can get above 148 kilowatts. Uh, my state of charge right now is 40, 46%. And it says this charging session should end in 22 minutes. So uh, if it goes back up any higher, I'll get back and I'll show that on the screen. Now I just up, jumped up to 181 kilowatts. And this is a lot higher than I was uh, getting at the uh, Tesla supercharger. But it's, it's so now I just dropped back down to 150 which is the same as I was getting at the Tesla supercharger. And right now my state of charge is 53%. And so far this session is pretty expensive. And I'm gonna to have to check to see if this is more expensive than the Tesla station. And this is even more expensive at 59 cents a kilowatt hour. So the Tesla one was 49 cents and this is 59 cents, which is uh, ridiculous. In this case, I will be headed to a Tesla supercharger instead. Well, this is also in a different state. Uh, the Tesla supercharger was in Southern Illinois, and this is somewhere in uh, the west of St. Louis, about 70 miles west of St. Louis. And that could be the difference. 43 kilowatt hours into my battery, uh, just like I did with the when I went to the Tesla supercharger and I have my phone uh, pulled up right here where you can see I put in 43 kilowatt hours at the Tesla supercharger, 49 cents per kilowatt hour. And that was $21. This is going to be a lot more expensive. Wait a minute. Okay, let's go out and check the price on this.
Go ahead and hook. And this cable is pretty uh, difficult to move. And we see how thick it is and it is cold outside. And as right here, you can see the price is at $26.86. And duration was 19 minutes and 50 and 15 seconds and i put in 42.8 kilowatt hours and now i'm gonna head back home and uh i'm gonna wrap everything up so welcome back and before i start my overview i just want to thank all of my subscribers uh i finally hit a thousand subscribers and i really really appreciate all the support and you know and the congratulations and uh and if you haven't subscribed and you've made it this far into the video uh please like and subscribe it doesn't cost you anything and also before i get into this overview i want to address uh a mistake on my part that i made in my last video uh, about the tesla chargers being low sharing uh and as a lot of you correctly pointed out v3 chargers do not load share so you get the full power uh once you plug in and so that was a mistake on my part and i try to aim to to be as accurate as possible in the information i'm providing but thank you for those of you who are who pointed that information out and so let's go ahead and get into this overview so first of all uh, I also incorrectly thought that these were Nevi funded chargers. They are not uh, Nevi funded. And when I last checked, there are only like maybe three in the country, one in Ohio, a few in New York. And Kansas just recently approved uh, six Nevi funded charging chargers in our state, but they haven't installed any yet. And so these are put in and installed by GM, Flying J, and EVGO. So they have a collaboration together, and that's why it's called GM Energy. So let me talk about some of the pros of the GM Energy stations. Uh, as you saw my reaction when I pulled up, uh, one of the main things that I really like is a canopy and the ability just to pull into the charger. And so it's, it's just like going to a gas station. And in previous videos before, this is one of my biggest complaints about our chargers, including the Tesla Supercharger Network, is that before you can get to four EV adoption, it has to be more like a gas station. And GM Energy, they got it. They, they hit a home run with that. It's just like pulling into a gas station. So if you're towing anything, uh, you don't have to drop your load or, you know, take up a bunch of parking spaces. You can pull right in just like you're pulling into a gas station stall. And w some other things I liked. Uh, it had a trash can, and I really appreciated that because I know going to Electrify America charging stations, there was no trash can, no place to wash your windows or anything like that. And now there was not anything to wash your windows with at this chase station also, and that's a need, needs improvement. Okay, now let's talk about cons, and this is compared to the Tesla Supercharger Network, and it was a price and it kind of surprised me. It was very expensive in my opinion, as far as EVs go, uh, it's almost 60 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a lot of money. And it, it the Tesla supercharger was, was uh, 49 cents per kilowatt hour. And so that kind of surprised me. Uh, however, if I was towing something, would I use that? Absolutely. I would. Um, and also, depending on what type of amenities I'm looking for. So if I want a long rest, uh, they do have showers at these Flying J's. Very good places to eat. Uh, I had a slice of pizza, one of the best slices of pizza that I have ever had before. There are just a lot of amenities that are there that the average non-EV owner really appreciate when they transition over to EVs because this EV transition is happening, whether you believe it or not, <laughs> it's happening. And so... I would really feel safe if my wife was to uh, refuel or recharge her vehicle at a station like this because it's well lit and secure. They have 24-hour you know, security on site, so it's really good. And let me compare it to the Tesla uh, supercharger. Now, as far as the charging speeds, I found out they were exactly the same. And what I thought was deregulated at the Tesla supercharger may not have been deregulated at all. And it was probably just a natural charging curve of my Rivian. And because at the EV Go station, it did the same thing. And you notice in the video, and I kind of pointed that out. And so that's big ups to the Tesla supercharger. So even with that magic dock, on there you're still getting full power and also i believe the tesla uh, supercharger connected faster to my vehicle than the evgo it took 
I'll say maybe 10 seconds more. It, I mean, it was not a noticeable difference, but it was a difference. I noticed the Tesla connected a lot faster. The biggest takeaway is the parking situation. This is only for non-Tesla owners. Now, if you're a Tesla owner, by all means, I will be using a Tesla supercharger network. It's superior. It was designed for Tesla vehicles. I mean, you can't get any better than that. But if you're a non-Tesla owner, and especially if you're towing a vehicle or towing something, this is definitely, I give this one two thumbs up as far as that's concerned. Um, now, if they can get that price somewhere reasonable, I mean, some people may not care because it's, it's probably still a lot less expensive than gas. And this is just really good for electric vehicle adoption. This is something I'm really excited to see. And I think that this will really help uh, more people look at electric vehicles now that the charging situation is going to be more on par with going to a gas station. And I think this is a really exciting time. And I was even happy to find out that these were not NEVI funded uh, charging stations, which means that once these NEVI funded stations go in, they're going to be even more. And those are all going to be located along the highway too. And they have to have, you know, places to use the bathroom and things like that. So this is all outstanding news for EV adoption. I'm really excited. And I'm going to continue to look for new charging stations and just to check things out to see, you know, if anything is going to be better than what GM has put in. But that's all I have for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me once again, and I can't wait to see you on the next video.